What's up? It's Austin. I am back for part three of the series of walking you through my pop demo for Cubase 12. Let's go ahead and look at some of the mixing and processing chains that I've used throughout this production session. And if you want to follow along in the demo project, all you have to do is open that up. You can save some of these uh, preset chains and you can use them in your own productions. So for this main kick, the sample is really, really great. All I did was a little bit of EQ. And so what I did was boosted some of these subby lows, took away some midsection, took away quite a bit here because it was just a little boxy and had like this weird roominess, and then added in some top end with a Just makes it feel a little bit more modern since it is such a vintage sounding uh, sample. And then took a little bit of that kind of boxy roomy 200 out. And again, just did like a high shelf to add some air. Didn't need any compression. It's already a pretty processed and compressed sample. And then for the snare, I just put on a reverb right here to give us some space. It was a super dry sample, so I felt like it needed something to have that 80s vibe. Quintessential to the 80s uh, kind of mixing template is putting a gate on your snare. So here are the settings. You're going to want to change that threshold depending on how loud your incoming signal is, but it sounds great. It sounds like this. A little bit of EQ where we're going to boost that fundamental, take away a little bit of the uh, next up resonance, and then pop in a little bit of top end so it feels a little more modern. Making it feel more modern with the brightness, but a bit more traditional in 80s with a gated reverb. Then we've got this delayed clap, which is cool. It's just a really dry clap. And what I did is I popped on mono delay, so it kind of gives us this really, really quick 1 8 note delay like this. And then I threw on a Roomworks to kind of spread it out, give us a little bit of width, give us a little bit of tail, take us to here. And then there's not much other drum processing. We've got a little bit of EQ on this sec, uh, the snare and the chorus. Taking away a little bit of like a metallic tinny frequency. And then same with this top loop, we're just going to add in some top. That's really all the mixing that's happening on the drums. And then on the bus. Not much is happening on the drums. Let's go to something a little bit more exciting. So like this drum fill, for example. This is what it sounds like with nothing on it. We're gonna make it a lot brighter with some EQ. We're gonna add a gate to get rid of some of those longer reverb tails that I don't really We're gonna add a chorus to make it feel super 80s. And then we're gonna add the tube to give us a little bit of saturation. And then for the second drum fill right here, we've got something cool happening. So we're taking away a little bit of this like super bright wispy top end right here. Here's what it sounds like with nothing on it. And then we're using one of my favorite new plugins. This is the effects modulator. This is a new thing in Cubase 12. And this thing is amazing. It's like a multi effects modulation tool where you can kind of sync things to tempo, sync things to um, LFOs, and it just sounds amazing. We've got the little dreamy tremolo preset. Just giving us some vibe and then frequency, just doing some cuts around the top. That's it. Nothing super, super special to see. We talked a little bit about the clap impact in the production video. We're putting on a ton of reverb. Gives us that kind of metallic, really long reverb tailed impact. You could even print that and save that as an effect to use in a later song. Then the other stuff that's happening is nothing super, super crazy. We've got some revelation and some uh, EQ. Softening that up with some bandpass EQ and a ton of reverb to just soften that uh, big down hit up. And then for the effects modulator, we did something really cool with this. This riser sounds a little bit like this. So it has no movement, but it is a great riser. What I ended up doing though, is I put a volume modulation to an eighth note right here with this kind of LFO shape. Kind of gives us that really cool, like trance gate, um, almost like a Michael Bay film kind of swell up. And I thought it worked really, really well. And then for the bass, we can go ahead and take a look. I am using Quadrafuzz to kind of give us some saturation on the main bass. really giving us some beef. 
No preset was used, but here are the settings that I used if you want to copy that, or again, you can save this preset chain. I just distorted some of the subby low end to kind of give us some harmonics, and then distorted some of the kind of mid and top end just to give us a little bit more grit in the actual mix. And then for the pre-chorus bass, I'm using a chorus and some studio EQ to do a filter sweep. And you can see that automating up, that's something that I really like to do in my pre-choruses. And then I just used a chorus to give us that quintessential kind of 80s wide chorus bass. But the main bass line only has two EQ cuts to get rid of some of this muddy low end. I find that kind of like 150, 160 to like 300 or 400 region pretty tough to mix with bass. It just starts to get in the way of things and it doesn't really sound amazing. And so I'll typically kind of like cut some of that out. And then for that top bass, I talked a little bit about this. We're using cloner to spread it out. We are filtering out all of the low end so there's not real big phase issues, putting on some revelation so we have a little bit of reverb and it gives us this cool little top end bass. For the bass stab, again, just some chorus. Nothing super, super crazy. I'm gonna try to fly through some of these synths. There's not as much processing happening on these. On the lo-fi piano, we've just got some EQ, nothing to really go over. Um, same for this verse pad, it was just super bright. Just filtering it out with some high and low shelves. We have nothing happening on this art besides the actual automation within the plugin itself. Nothing happening on the backing pad. This pre-chorus lead is like where we start to tie in some stuff. I've got Squasher, Studio EQ, and some EQ right here. So we've got this. Squasher is giving us um, just a little bit of saturation, a little bit of punch. It's a really, really nice kind of just multi-band EQ, compressor, exciter. Just adds a nice little bit of pizzazz, taking away some mids with Studio EQ, nothing insane. Uh, Lo-fi piano, just a filter and some delay. Nothing crazy, nothing to really go over there. Analog brass, just a little bit of air in the EQ. Spacey lead, this is where we should start talking because this chain does change the sound quite a bit. Here's what the kind of raw synth preset sounds like. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of width, a little bit of movement with effects modulator right here. I'm adding quite a bit of grit and saturation with a squasher right here. And then just taming some of that with some EQ because this kind of high resonance gets insane sounding. So with everything, it sounds like this. And then for the left side, we've just got some EQ. And for the right side, we've got some EQ and some reverb. Nothing to really go over there. This accent melody right here, we have another instance of effects modulator. And it's just giving us that swell vibe. Synth Pad FX3 is the preset that was used. I might have tweaked a couple things, but it just gives us a nice big kind of sustaining uh, sidechain effect. Then we've got this analog brass, literally nothing happening on it. And then this post chorus lead, squasher and studio EQ. Just thinning it out, making it a little bit brighter. It can sit on top of the mix without muddying up the mix. For the guitar preset, we can talk a little bit about that because that was done from scratch. We have the VST amp rack right here. We're gonna have a gate and a compressor. Then we're gonna be going into, uh, I can't remember, I think the plexi right here. And then the post effects is really where this matters. We have a phaser and a tape delay and a reverb. I wanted it super thin, I just wanted it to sit on top without getting in the way of everything. Sounds a little bit something like this. Pretty similar for this. We've got some auto pan taking it back and forth. We've got some delay kind of making it a little bit more unique. Nothing super duper wild on that. So let's go ahead and let's move on to vocals. This is one of the more important things. We'll just cover the lead vocal for the verse because pretty much all of the other vocal chains are copied from this. We'll also cover that pre-chorus crush vocal. But the first thing that I do is just throw on some pitch correction and I just have that set to the key. I'm just in C major, nothing super, super wild. I've got a little bit of EQ happening right here to take away some lows, some mids, some high mids and pop in a little bit of air. 
And then let's go ahead and take a look at what we're doing. So the first thing that we've got is frequency that is just cutting some of these little kind of room modes and uh, low in. It's been a couple weeks since you've been home. I'm getting used to being all alone. And we just need to thin that up so we can set it on top of the mix because if we have too much of that low mid, especially before compression, it starts to get really insane. So here we have the tube compressor, fast attack, fast release, little bit of drive for some saturation. It's been a couple weeks since you've been home. I'm getting used to being all alone. We've got another tube compressor right here with a little bit slower attack and a very slow release. This one's doing more of the kind of big picture squeezing. It's been a couple weeks since you've been home. I'm getting used to being all alone. So with all of that compression and all of that EQ, we are running into a ton of sibilance. And so what we've done is we've added a de to kind of take away that top end. It's been a couple weeks since you've been home. I'm getting used to being all alone. And instead of having one de work way too hard, I'll pop in another one more around this like two to five K because one will catch all of the S's and one will catch more of like the TH and the F sounds. It's been a couple weeks since you've been home. Then for our sense, we have a long reverb, a quarter note reverb, and a short reverb. The long reverb is using Roomworks Plate Vintage. Here are the settings. The short reverb is using Roomworks Room Smooth. There are the settings if you want to copy that. And then the quarter note delay is just the ping pong delay. Sets so a quarter note, 100% wet, filtering that out, and then also sending that to the long reverb so that uh, delayed sound has a little bit of reverb baked in. And all together, sounds like this. It's been a couple weeks since you've been home. I'm getting used to. And then the only other vocal to really cover is this crushed vocal. It's pretty much the same all the way up to here. We've added some detube for some saturation. Send days with no sun. We're adding a little bit of cloner to get some space and some width and some just kind of wonky weirdness. And then a little bit of stereo delay to kind of give us a baked in slap back effect. And we're using that straight on the channel instead of as a send because it's only happening right here for effect. I don't really need tons of control over it like I would with some of the other reverbs that we use. And then in the chorus, we pretty much process everything exactly the same. Um, as you can see, I did some different EQ moves right here in the built-in equalizer. But that's about it. There's really nothing super crazy happening on any of that. So if you want to copy those, open up the session, you can print those. And then for the vocal chop, you probably need to go over this because there is quite a bit happening on here. It sounds like this straight up. So I'm doing some pitch correction and some destroyer. Then I've got some frequency, just taking away some of the, I mean, it's the same as like the main vocal chain. Same de uh, compressors and de that all stays the same. And then we've got a stereo delay. We've got a big revelation. We've got some studio EQ filter. And then most importantly, we've got the effects modulator right here doing a little bit of sweeping. We duplicated that and spread it out, put cloner on to move it out, and uh, took it down an octave, and we've got this. And that is pretty much all of the processing. If you want to go into the session, you'll see that we did some bus processing on the synth. We did some bus processing on the bass, really with just like some compressors, some saturators, things to add a little bit more pizzazz. But that is pretty much all of the fundamental mixing chains throughout this. So hopefully you've enjoyed this little three-part series. Hopefully you enjoy kind of flipping through this pop demo. If you have any questions, comment down below. I'll be popping in from my own channel to answer whatever I can. And I know the Cubase moderators on this channel will also be answering whatever they can. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We really, really appreciate it. And again, from me to Cubase, thank you so much for having me to create this demo. It was a massive honor and such a privilege. But other than that, my name is Austin Hull. It's been amazing, and I will see you guys soon. Much love. Peace.